Well, you are certainly correct. I just showed you Windows Vista. The operating system, which has been crowned as the world's most hated operating system. And today, I am going to explain why. Hello, I'm Xavier, and welcome to the downfall of Windows Vista. We are going to be discussing the topic of Vista, otherwise known as the failure of it. Most of you probably already know this, so but we're going to go over it together anyway. Microsoft began work on Windows Vista, known at the time by its codename Longhorn. In May 2001, five months before the release of Windows XP, it was originally expected to ship in late 2003 as a minor step between XP and Blackcomb, which was planned to be the company's next major oper operating system release. Gradually, Longhorn assimilated many of the important new features and technologies slated for Blackcomb, resulting in the release date being pushed back several times in three years. Faced with ongoing delays and concerns about feature creep, Microsoft announced on August 27, 2004 that they had revised its plans. For this reason, Longhorn was reset to start work on, on componentizing Windows Server 2003 Service Pack 1 code base and over time reincorporating the features that would be intended for an actual operating system release. However, some previously announced features such as WinFS were dropped or postponed and a new software development methodology called the SDL was incorporated to address concerns with the security of the Windows code base which is programmed in C, C, C++ and assembly. Longhorn officially became known as Vista in 2005. By 2004, it became obvious to the my Windows team at Microsoft that they were losing sight of what needed to be done com to complete the next version of Windows and ship to customers. Internally, some Microsoft employees were describing to the Longhorn project as another Cairo or Cairo.net, referring to the Cairo development project that the company embarked on the first half of the 1990s which never resulted in a shipping operating system. Microsoft was shocked in 2005 by Apple's release of OS X 10.4 Tiger. It offered, a, it offered only a limited subset of features planned for Longhorn and in particular fast file searching and integrated graphics and sound processing but appeared to have impressive reliability and performance compared to the contemporary Longhorn builds. To basically say it outright, Windows Vista was way ahead of its time. With the operating system being released in 2007 worldwide, it was way too advanced with its arrow look and feel, including translucent taskbar, window borders, title bars, and more. It was very hard for the 1 GHz to 4 GHz processors and GPUs to keep up at the time. Along with it storing four different visual styles for the computer, which probably took up a lot of memory space. Now, if Windows Vista was released between the time period of 2012 to 2021, it would be an acceptable OS, but of course people would always try and find a medium for people to hate on it. When Windows Vista was announced in 2005 at the Microsoft PDC Professional Developer Conference, a year later, the company Apple decided it was time to begin targeting Microsoft's Vista since they could get an advantage on them with that. Since it was technically copying 2006's OS X 
10.4 Tiger, which we talked about earlier. Why am I saying that? Well, let's look at the typical screenshot of Tiger and what we've seen on the latest beta of Vista. Some similarities here. Let's look at Spotlight. Now, um, with Spotlight, finally, it's easier to find information on your local disks than information on the web. And we have this incredible technology under the hood. After the WinFS debacle, they've been scrambling to understand how to implement that stuff. Now, in terms of UI, they did a major innovation. Instead of having the menu on the top right, they put it <laughs> on the bottom left. Another key technology is, of course, the browser technology. With Safari, we kind of restarted innovation and creation in the browser space by having a browser that's both elegant, simple, yet powerful. And in Tiger, we added a personal clipping assistant functionality, Safari RSS. Guess what? IE7 RSS. They even have the same layout for the little kind of filter box on the right. Now, talking of similar layout, um, there's our mail program, and for the longest time, a window that has this kind of combo that does mail and calendaring and address book, well, no longer. It's now an independent program. This is iCal, our calendaring program, and this is Windows Calendar. <laughs> they even tried to copy the color scheme. <laughs> and didn't get that quite right. Now this is a logo. Now you may think that I made up the logo by taking the standard Microsoft Windows logo and adding a nice aqua bubble on top. No, that's the official logo. <laughs> but you know, underneath it all, it's still Windows. <laughs> It still has the registry as its core. It's still <laughs> DLL hell. And it has this well-loved feature that's called activation. <laughs> if you can't innovate, I guess you just imitate, it, but it's never quite as good as the original. Yep, that happened live on stage. After those ads started, a lot of people started to switch to a Mac because it was easier to use and people thought that everything Apple said sh and showed in their ads were true. Alright, so by the time January 2007 came around, most people already knew about Windows Vista's issues and problems. Knowing that they no when Microsoft knowing that they didn't add half the things that they promised to users during the Windows Vista announcement, going in a serious pattern right now with the bad, good, bad. Also having to follow in the footsteps of one of the most popular OSs of all time, which you created, is also really, really hard. And losing customers quickly is also really horrible for the company quote on a customer i upgraded to windows vista within the first five minutes of setup my computer crashed i'm sticking with xp and with big review slash blog tech sites at the time they all hated vista too putting a lot of stress on the heart of microsoft So we have a lot to talk about right now, so let's get right into it. So Service Pack 1 is an update to DirectX 10 named DirectX 10.1, marked mandatory several features that were previously optional in Direct3D 10 hardware. 
Graphic cards were required to support DirectX 10.1. Desktop search users were able to change the default desktop search program to one provided by a third party instead of the Microsoft desktop search program that comes with Vista. And desktop search programs will be will be able to seamlessly tie in their services into the operating system. These changes come in part due to complaints from Google, whose Google desktop search application was completely irrelevant by the presence of Vista's built-in desktop search. The initial deployment of the service pack caused a number of machines to continuously reboot, rendering the machines completely useless. This temporarily caused Microsoft to suspend automatic deployment of the service pack until the problem was fixed. So the Mojave experiment was a test by Microsoft to get users to see the bright side of Windows Vista instead of all the bad stuff. So it's just an informal discussion. I'll be asking some questions and you just answer them as honestly as, as you can. So why haven't you upgraded to Vista yet? Just the bad things I've heard about it. I just heard negative things. I never tried it myself. I, I wouldn't touch the thing. It's horrible. We have so many problems. It crashes. <laughs> I've heard nothing but bad things about Vista, really. I'd like you to rate your overall favorability of Windows Vista. Okay. The paper. Okay, so you gave Windows Vista a zero. Today, I'm going to show you a little bit about Windows Mojave. Okay. which is actually uh, the newest version of Windows. I want to see it. <laughs> I want to see how it works. Oh, yeah. Wow. It's sick. Yes. That's great. So, <gasps> that's great. I love gadgets. Man, it's awesome. Oh, what do you think of this new upgrade? Really cool. It, it's very impressive. The speed is incredible, right? I need an upgrade, and that looks like everything that I would need. That's 10, definitely. All right. Well, I have to confess to you, this is Vista. Really? What? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> this is Windows Vista. Son of a gun. Yeah, you got me. I had no idea that you could do all this with Windows Vista. It represents a lot of things that, that you could only dream of um, a few years back. Actually, it's totally different than what I had heard it would be like. I'm impressed. I mean, it looks awesome. I mean, it just seems so easy. I'm getting it. <laughs> I would say it's an awesome program, but you have to see for yourself. After watching that video for the first time, I realized that half the user base who doesn't like Windows Vista were only impacted by the all the other people we talked about earlier in Mockery. That really sucks. People always told me not to be a follower, but to be a leader. They've never tried the OS themselves, but just because of everyone else, they didn't touch it. After the ad campaign was over, over 250,000 people switched to, you guessed it, Windows Vista, and everyone was happy. SP2 provided lots and lots of new content for daily users to enjoy. Even though Windows Vista has had lots of problems, people still work through it with Service Pack 2. Now I'm going to list some of the features that SP2 released. One downside to Service Pack 2 update is that if you didn't update to Service Pack 1, you can't install Service Pack 2. Meaning that if you want all these new features in an SP2, you would have had to sit through 
two whole updates to get those features. So yeah, just like that, Windows 7 was released in 2009 and everyone switched to Windows 7. It had its issues every now and then, but it was more simplified and easier to use than Vista. And towards the end of its lifetime, it reportedly had the user base of roughly 330 million, with a successor having 400 million. Now. Since this documentary is basically over, let's go over some of the hidden in the back wall stuff. Well, I hope you guys did all enjoy this documentary. It took me almost a whole of uh, four days to make this entire project. So I would really, really appreciate it if you left a like or even you subscribed, maybe even both. Anyways, goodbye. You can go ahead and click on any of the other screens on the on the video. <laughs> any of the <laughs> You can go ahead and click on any of the other videos that are on the screen right now, or you can watch the rest of the credits. Everybody, that's going to be it from me. I love you guys so much. See you later.